So I was reading through um, Matthew and I came across the story of Jesus walking on the water and I had this thought that I've never thought before. What is the point of this story? Have you ever just read the word and thought, what were, why is that even there? It's in all four of the Gospels, but here in Matthew, we get a little bit more detail um, of Peter's encounter, how that Jesus is walking on the water. He comes, they think it's a ghost, and he says, no, no, it's me. Then Peter, who, by the way, um, as a worshiper, I'm constantly trying to, you know, kind of model my life after David. I've written uh, a book. I'm working on my second book um, on his life, and I'm this man after God's own heart, and this passionate worshiper. I want to be like that. I want to be, you know, man after God's own heart. But you know, the reality is, I, I, I find myself identifying not so much like David, but actually I respond and identify more with the life of Peter. <laughs> I know, that's terrible. Because if you know Peter's character, he was always saying the wrong thing at the wrong time, constantly putting his, sticking his foot in his mouth. But here's an instance where this guy who was unruly and outspoken and kind of an emotional basket case, really, tells Jesus, if it's really you, ask me to come out, of the out on the water with you. And then he steps out on the water. But here's the thing. What is the point? What was actually accomplished? There was no, I don't know, there was no healing. There was no crowds. I mean, I know the 11 apostles were, I mean, uh, disciples were sitting in the boat, but what did it actually accomplish in the middle of a storm where, it, you know, the waves are everywhere. Nobody can really see. There's a lot of wind and gusts and, and Peter's out walking on the water. It didn't really accomplish anything. He falls in the water. It's kind of almost like a failure. And I know that everybody says he's the only person that walked on the water besides Jesus, and that's cool. But what's the point? Yes, I walked on the water with Jesus. But here's the thing. When they got back in the boat, here's what the scripture says. They climbed into the boat. The wind died down. Then all those in the boat worshipped Jesus and said, Truly, he is the Son of God. Truly, you are the Son of God. What's interesting about that story is that if you turn just a few chapters later, Jesus is among his disciples, and he asks him this question. He says, who do men say that I am? All the disciples think about it for a minute, and then they start saying, Elijah, Jeremiah, Ezekiel, you're one of the prophets, you're a teacher, you're a rabbi. That's what they're saying. But then Jesus turns to him and he says, but who do you say that I am? Peter steps up, and says, you are the Son of God. Jesus turns to him and he said, man did not reveal this to you, but my Father in heaven. What's crazy about that is if you look at the encounter with Jesus on the water, they all had this revelation that Jesus was the Son of God. But when it counted, and when Jesus actually asked the question, who am I? It was only Peter who stepped up and said, you are the Christ. Why? The reason I believe is because Peter was the only one who was willing to take the risk in private. This wasn't in front of masses of crowds of people. This was just the leaders, the 12 guys that Jesus picked to found his church, to found the kingdom being established here on earth. There was one guy who in private stepped out onto the water and went to Jesus. Let me put it this way. He had an encounter for himself with the miracle working power of God. And then all these months later or however long it was later, when Jesus tested them and said, who am I? It was Peter who stepped up because he had, he had encountered Jesus in that one moment that one encounter that none, nobody else had encountered that was able to say, you are the Christ, the Son of God. And then here's what Jesus says. Because you know who I am, let me tell you who you are. You are the rock. 
you are the one that I'm giving the keys of the kingdom to, who now in public, when I'm all, when I'm dead, when I'm have been raised and I'm gone to heaven, Jesus was looking to the future because you know who I am and you are the risk taker willing to step out and encounter me uh, personally. When nobody else was willing to take that step and take that risk, you stepped out and learned a lesson about who I am that nobody else had learned. I'm going to give you the kingdom. I'm going to give you the keys to the kingdom of God. You will step up on the day of Pentecost and preach and proclaim my gospel and found the church. The very reason that I came to this earth, you're going to be the one that's going to be the extension of who I am to the world around you. Not only that, but then uh, in the encounter with Cornelius, he preaches the gospel to the Gentiles. Why am I saying all this? For me, I believe that the season that we're in right now is where, yeah, we're not out among the masses. We're not preaching to thousands or hundreds or whoever, wherever we're at. We are preaching and encountering Jesus personally. He's given us this opportunity to dive into his word, to learn, to grow, to encounter his presence and to be broken and to be brought down. And to, man, thank you, Peter, for willing to fail the test for being willing to step out and actually jump out there and fail. Because it was through your failure in private. It was through that, that just saying, hey, I'll do it. I'll jump out there. I will, I will do uh, uh, what maybe others are not willing to do and then fail trying that gave, you, gave him the encounter with Jesus to say, this guy is legit. Even though may, I may have failed, um, he appreciated my faith. He appreciated my, uh, my perseverance, my uh, stubbornness to get in, to, 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 to go for it, to, to take the leap, to take the risk and encounter Jesus for myself. And the more that he encountered Jesus for himself, the more that God revealed himself to him and that he was given the keys. I, I believe that a lot of people are going to leave this quarantine with keys to the kingdom. They're going to step out and do things that they never dreamed possible because of personal encounters uh, with Jesus during this season, during this moment. So hope that encourages you. I know it encourages me. So God bless you. Have a great day.